Hi there. This is one of a series of topic videos covering the important topic of inflation. And in this revision tutorial, we're going to focus on how inflation is measured in the UK economy. So what is inflation? Inflation is best defined as a sustained increase or rise in the general price level or the cost of living. And when inflation is positive, then there's a fall in the real purchasing power of a given amount of money. Inflation is measured by calculating the annual percentage change of a price index, which represents the prices of all the major goods and services bought in the UK economy. We call that the consumer price index. The UK government has an inflation target at the moment of 2% using CPI and it's the job of the Bank of England, Bank of England BOE, to set their monetary policy base interest rates in order that inflationary pressure is controlled and that eventually the inflation target of 2% is reached over a two-year time horizon, a two-year forecasting time period. It's important to note that a fall in inflation does not mean that prices are falling generally. If inflation falls from 5%, let's say, to 2%, that means prices are rising, but less quickly. Only when there is deflation is there a sustained fall in the general level of prices. Here's a chart showing the countries with the highest inflation rate in 2015. Indeed, since this chart was produced, the rate of inflation in Venezuela is estimated to have surged well above 100%. Their economy is in the middle of a deep economic, financial and political crisis at the moment. But countries such as Ukraine and Belarus and Argentina and Russia have very high inflation. In Russia's case, one of the proximate causes has been a collapse in the value of their currency, causing a steep increase in the price of imports. These are countries in 2015 that had inflation, an annual change of prices of more than 10%. Here's a picture for inflation in the UK economy. And as I said before, when the rate of inflation is falling, that doesn't mean that prices are falling. It means they're rising less quickly. We call that disinflation. I've put in on the chart the consumer price inflation target of 2%. You can see that in the last couple of years, 2014 and especially in 2015, the rate of inflation has been well below target. Indeed, in 2015, prices rarely, barely increased at all, on average. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about how inflation is calculated in the UK. The main measure is the Consumer Price Index. And this is an index that represents the prices of most major goods and services bought by consumers in the UK economy. Changes in the CPI from year to year show the change in the general price level. So how is CPI constructed? The best way of describing CPI is that it is a representative basket of goods and services bought by households, and it's a weighted price index. Uh, in other words, each good or service in this basket of goods and products is weighted to reflect the proportion of household spending that it receives. We'll see how that works in a minute. Every month, well over 100,000 separate price data points are taken around the country, many, many locations, over 600 different goods and services. The weights attached to each item are multiplied by the price changes, and we get a weighted price index. We'll go through an example in a second. Uh, now, the weights are periodically changed to reflect changing spending patterns, and each year, some items drop out of the index, and some items come in for the first time. If you Google CPI basket, you'll find out the latest changes for each year. Here are the weightings for the consumer price index in the UK for 2016. Uh, in red, I've put in a couple of important ones. Housing costs, water, utility bills, electricity, gas. They're the biggest item in the index. They have a weighting of 266 or 26.6%. And transport costs or uh, also significant as you can see, just under 13% of household income goes on transport, including things like rail fares. Those are the weightings used for the index. Now let's work through a simple CPI calculation. To make things a little easier to understand, I'm going to calculate a CPI just using four items of spending. So together, 
we put the weightings in, they'll add up to a thousand. In other words, all of the spending goes on these four items. Notice that I've allocated a 400 weighting to food and drinks, suggesting that households spend a greater percentage of their income on food and drinks compared to the other three. Transport in this example is the least heavily weighted item. I'm going to take 2015 as my base year for the index. So whatever average prices were in 2015, we allocate an index number of 100. And on the right hand side, you can see the price index in 2016 for the four items. Clothing and footwear went up by 5%, transport went up by 9%, food and drink went up by 2%, but I'm assuming here that the cost of communication actually fell by 7%. In other words, there was some deflation in the communication sector. Maybe your mobile phone subscription became a little cheaper in 2016. So how do we calculate a simple CPI? Well, the way to do this is to multiply the price index. Let's, take, let's say we're taking 2016. You multiply the price index for each item by their weighting, because the weighting is the relative importance of the index. It's the key point about the CPI. So we multiply, for example, clothing and footwear to 50 multiplied by 105. Transport, 150 multiplied by 109. Multiply the price index for each item by their weighting. That gives us four numbers. We just add those together. And then we divide by the sum of the weightings, which in this case will be 1,000. 250, 150, 400, and 200 sum to 1,000. I'll do the maths for you. So I'll put in a right-hand column here where I've indexed, uh, just put in the 2016 price index and multiply by the weightings, we get four numbers. The sum of the index is 102,000. Divide by the sum of the weights, 1,000. Gives a price index for 2016 of 102. What this means is the rate of inflation in this year was 2%. On average, prices went up by 2%. Food and drink went up by 2%, heavily weighted. Communication had some deflation. The other two items more than 2%. But according to this weighted price index, prices went up by 2%. That's handy because the inflation target is 2%. Happy days. Here's a chart showing the actual consumer price index for the UK since the turn of the new millennium. And it shows that consumer prices have been going up, but at a fairly slow rate. We've had a number of years of relatively low inflation, sometimes rising close to 5%, for example, 2007 uh, through to 2008 and 9, quite relatively high inflation there. But notice in 2014, 2015, the consumer price index stayed the same. In other words, there was effectively zero inflation in 2015. Now, the CPI is the published measure of inflation. And it's an important one. But it's significant to be aware of the limitations of the CPI as a measure of inflation. When the inflation data is published, whatever it is, 0.5% or 0.7%, that's the inflation rate for the CPI as a whole. But of course, nobody really is average. First of all, the CPI is not fully representative. Uh, many households are non-typical. Uh, a substantial amount of CPI is devoted to the cost of fuel and uh, things like car maintenance and car repairs. Well, that's not applicable to somebody who don't, doesn't own a car. Bus fares, people who rarely travel on buses, etc. So that's not representative. Secondly, uh, spending patterns differ. So single people, for example, have typically a different spending pattern from households that have one or even more children. The family expenditure will be different in terms of composition. Quite important to think about the changing quality of goods and services as well. So the CPI tells us about the price of a good or service. But of course, it may hide important qualitative changes in both the range and the quality and the performance of a product. So your smartphone subscription goes down a little bit. That might be deflation. It might go up a little bit, inflation. But what about what your smartphone can do in terms of the consumer services, the consumer surplus, the utility that you get from using the product. CPI does change from year to year. As I've said, some items come in, some items go out, but actually it changes relatively slowly. Uh, so the CPI might be a little bit behind the curve in terms of picking up 
lots of new goods and services which enter our consciousness but which aren't yet sufficiently important to really capture the inflation rate in the economy. Here's some data showing the CPI in the UK since 1995. It shows the annual rate of change of prices, in other words, inflation. It's quite interesting because if you look at the blue line, that's services, you know, from haircuts through to school fees and you know, physiotherapy appointments, what have you. Uh, typical services, restaurant meals, for example. And that's remained positive. Uh, and indeed, it's remained above 2% since 1995. Whereas the red dotted line shows inflation for goods, including things like TV screens, computers and furniture. Indeed, in some parts of uh, the UK, across the UK, sorry, in the early part of the last decade, this red line went into negative territory. The price of goods on average was falling. There was deflation. And so there was a divergence between inflation in services and inflation in goods. Some items of inflation are quite volatile. They change a lot from month to month and from year to year. So the blue line in this chart shows the rate of inflation, CPI, including every item. Notice in 2015, the blue line hit zero, zero inflation. The red line takes out some volatile elements. It excludes energy bills, food prices, alcohol, tobacco, and it gives us a measure of what's called core inflation. Now, don't worry too much about this, this point, but it does show that some items in the index are actually more volatile than others. So, for example, in 2015, energy bills were falling, and of course that was bringing down the rate of inflation. This chart kind of reinforces this a little bit. These are the contributions to CPI inflation since 2012. It's a stacked diagram, so the top of the chart shows what the actual rate of inflation was. And in 2012 to 2013, inflation was around 25 3%. And each item in the index was going up in price. However, notice now that in 2014 into 2015, we have some deflation. If you can see these colours clearly enough, most of that was falling food and drink prices and falling utility bills for electricity and gas. And also, of course, the fall in the price of petrol with global oil prices falling. So into 2014, 2015, we had some quite strong deflationary forces bringing down the consumer price index figure. We wait to see if that will continue. Just finishing off here, we've, this has been a topic video on inflation. I know some of you are really keen in these topic videos to have some great definitions to add to your notes. So I've put some definitions into this little summary slide for you. It's a definition of the consumer price index, a definition of deflation, uh, we've said that disinflation is when the rate of inflation falls. Some countries like Venezuela are experiencing what, what amounts to hyperinflation. And another one there, unit labour cost, the costs of production in terms of cost labour cost per unit. So if you need a key definition for your notes, this is the time to press the pause button. We won't hold it against you. We'll see you in a few seconds. Indeed, that's the end of the presentation. This was a look at how we measure inflation in the UK with a particular focus on the consumer price index. We're going to have a whole series of videos on inflation, so just use the search function in the YouTube channel, you should find what you need. Take care everybody, see you soon.